welcome to Lexigen's Win and Learn Trapper event. Lexigen is proud to bring you this event in partnership with the Pennington Biomedical Research Center Genomics Corps. My name is Josh Franken and I am your Central U.S. Sales Manager. Before we officially start, I have some announcements. I'd like to remind the attendees are in listen-only mode for the presentation. We welcome questions via text chat and questions will be answered at the end. At the end of the webinar, there will also be an exit survey for everyone. If you could just take a few seconds, not close the page immediately after we finish up, uh, you'll have a chance to win a $5 Starbucks gift card upon correctly answering our simple two questions. The prize is limited to the first 40 attendees to answer it correctly. I am your moderator for today's presentation. Again, my name is Josh Franken and I am uh, handling the introduction and features and benefits as well. Our technical product manager, Dr. Yvonne Gopal, will take you through the, tra the Trapper technology and some recently published data for the product. Uh, and then I will moderate the question and answer session featuring two panelists. Yvonne will return for that. And also my field application scientist, Alex Moiker, will be joining us. And then finally, I hope you guys will stick around to answer the uh, exit survey as well. With that, let's begin. Uh, Lexigen is a biotech company founded in Vienna, Austria in 2007, focused on developing tech for complete transcriptome sequencing. Uh, the U.S. branch was formed in 2014 to support sales and tech support within the United States. All R&D services, manufacturing, et cetera, is in Vienna, Austria. So the primary question we are here to answer today is why should you be interested in Trapper? The starting place is why should you be interested in small RNA analysis at all? So please bear with me for a second. I'm sure many of you already have your own reasons. Uh, simply put, small RNAs are defined as RNAs shorter than 200 nucleotides. Many of the functional communities of RNAs are in fact a lot smaller than this. Studying small RNAs can and should be an aspect of every applied research project. They're involved in all regulatory pathways. They serve as biomarkers for disease detection and monitoring, and we can target them with drugs to affect disease states as well. So this is just a sampling of common reason and reasons investigators wish to study small RNAs. But why Trapper for your small RNA extraction? Currently, there are many issues with other extraction methods. A perfect or maybe a near-perfect extraction would combine fast, easy, inexpensive, robust, universal, sensitive, and specific. Current technology fails to provide all or even most of these into one package. You may be familiar with the methods listed here for small RNA extraction. The most common methods are your commercial small, small RNA extraction kits, which are very similar in components and protocols to well-known DNA and RNA extraction kits. Uh, relying on a series of buffers, buffers preparing RNA for binding, washing, and eluding from your silica filter column. These are cheap, fast, and easy, but they are not sensitive or specific. All RNAs below 200 nucleotides are purified, including the majority of degraded RNAs of various kinds in this size range. A common improvement to this method could be gel extraction. It does improve specificity by allowing you to extract RNA that is generally in the size range of your exact RNAs of interest, but you would still extract all degraded RNAs within this size range as well. It retains being comparatively cheap, but is very low yield and highly tedious. If you, if you wish to increase your specificity even further, small RNA extraction can be followed with custom ribosomal RNA depletion. This is not a universal method, as you will need custom rRNA depletion probes that are specific to your organism. But even worse, it reduces yield even more 
potentially reducing sensitivity, and the process can take two to three days, making this one of the most tedious methods. Finally, there is a very different type of approach utilizing co-amino precipitation. Uh, you, you, you use a native lysate from your sample to purify the risk complexes via anti-argonaut antibodies, followed by extraction and co-purification of RNAs. The upshot is an increase in sensitivity and specificity. The downside to this method is it is very, experience, very expensive and, again, very tedious at one to two days, and the antibodies must be specific. So again, why Trapper? Trapper is the new gold standard for small RNA extraction because it does combine fast, easy, inexpensive, robust, universal, sensitive, and specific all into one small RNA extraction. So with no further ado, I will now turn the presentation over to Dr. Yvonne Gopal so she can walk you through some very eye-catching and intriguing figures and data. Yvonne? Yes, thanks, Josh. Um, as already introduced, I am a technical product manager at Lexogen, but I'm also a research scientist. And today is my pleasure to introduce the science behind Trapper small RNA isolation kit to you all, and to guide you through some performance data and show you how easily you can assess functional small RNAs with Trapper. But first of all, what is Trapper? Trapper is the abbreviation for Trans Kingdom Rapid Affordable Purification of Risk. Trapper is universally applicable. It is faster than any comparable method, like agoco immunoprecipitation that Josh just introduced to you. It is affordable. You only need one column per prep. And as these are microspin columns, you also do not require any specialized equipment like large gel apparatuses or high voltage power packs that are required for gel extraction. A simple benchtop centrifuge is all that you need. And the Trapper method isolates RNA-induced silencing complexes, so-called risks. The Trapper technology was developed by a team of researchers at the ETH Zurich, and the method was recently published in NAR by Grenzinger et al. The data we will see today was generated during the benchmarking of the Trapper technology. Risks are RNA-induced silencing complexes. They are composed of a protein component at, which, at the core of which uh, we have argonaut proteins of the AGO and the PV family, and small RNA components. The small RNAs, mostly microRNAs, as iRNAs or pi RNAs, guide the risk to the respective target mRNA by complementary seed pairing. And the ego protein then silences the target mRNA, mostly by cleavage of the message, but also other, mes other um, mechanisms apply, like transcriptional and translational silencing. The whole process is referred to as RNA interference, and it is a, a fundamental process of gene regulation in eukaryotic organisms. So, functional, physiological relevant small RNAs associate with risks and they are active in RNA interference pathway. While ego proteins and small RNAs are quite universal, the ego repertoire between organisms varies a lot. For instance, Drosophila possesses five ego family proteins, humans possess eight, and C. elegans even has 27. Also, the different subtypes of egos vary a lot between species. Classical ego-specific methods like co-immunoprecipitation that also yield functional small RNAs require a detailed knowledge of the sample's ego composition. These methods require either epitope tagging of all ego proteins within an organism or specific antibodies for each of the ego types in a given organism. So they are very specific, but as Josh already mentioned, they're not universal. Trapper, on the other hand, exploits conserved properties of risks, and therefore it can isolate native risks from all organisms. Trapper does not require any a priori knowledge of the sample's ego composition at all. 
It does enable research on uncharacterized organisms and can also facilitate the discovery of novel small RNAs, as small RNAs that are purified with trucker were complex to agroproteins in vivo. So this means that you can predict with high confidence that a new unknown small RNA that pops up in your data really has a functional role in the cell. The same is true for functional small RNA isoforms. These either contain SNPs or possess different start and end sites, and it is often very hard to judge whether these isoforms are indeed functional. Last but not least, Trapper also allows to assess regulatory tRNA halves. These have been recently recognized as potent regulators of gene expression as well. But here also judging if a given tRNA fragment is indeed functional is quite difficult. Most of the undesired degradation products that you usually find in your RNA data, so small RNA data sets, they largely correspond to fragmented tRNAs. So it's like looking for a needle in a haystack. And previously, only the laborious agro-co-immunoprecipitation methods could help shed some light on this. But now to the trapper method. Isolating small RNAs with trapper is quite easy. You simply lyse your cells or tissues or dissolve your liquid samples in the trapper lysis button. You end up with a lysis of free RNA, DNA, proteins, and protein nucleic acid complexes that also contain the native risk. These lysids are then passed through a ready-to-use trapper column. The column works by ion exchange chromatography, and it retains all free RNA and DNA, while the native risks pass the column and are eluted in the elution fraction. So the risk-enriched fraction can then be used for RNA extraction, and the extracted RNA is readily accessible for small RNA analysis. From sample to risk fraction, it only takes 15 minutes or less. In one more hour, functional sRNAs can be isolated from this risk fraction, and no specialized lab equipment is needed. The procedure is gel-free, it is easy to handle, and the extracted RNA is directly suitable for NGS library preps or other challenging small RNA applications. Now we will have a look at the performance of Trapper. Trapper was used on a variety of organisms to extract small RNAs. The gel shown here is an autoradiograph after Trapper on paramecium. RNA was extracted from the input loaded onto the Trapper column. This is the lane marked with an I or from the trapper elution fraction, here marked with an E in green, or from the fraction that is normally retained on the column, marked with an R last lane in the plot. The extracted RNA was radio-labeled and run on a denaturing gel to be separated by size. There is no signal in the range between 20 to 30 nucleotides visible in the input fraction. This is because the larger RNA makes up the bulk of RNA in this fraction, so that the small RNA is so little that it's not even visible on the job. Upon removal of the bulk RNA on the trapper column, the small RNA signal becomes readily visible. When we have a look at the, at the fraction that is normally retained on the columns, you see that there is no signal for the small RNA, but the larger bulk RNA is indeed retained. The same analysis was done on various other species, including plants, yeast, C. elegans, and mammals. For mammals here, a mouse tissue was shown. As you can see, for each species, the characteristic bands are visible in the range where you expected for the small RNA fraction to be. But do these signals really, really correspond to small RNAs? To assess this question, the experiment was repeated on Arabidopsis samples. The autoradiograph is shown here as well. Again, you can see the two bands that correspond to the SI RNAs and microRNA fraction of Arabidopsis. 
the extracted RNA was then used and subjected to low molecular weight northern blotting using specific probes directed against known small RNAs. The results of the northern blot analysis is shown on the right. Again, all three fractions are shown. The upper panel shows you the ethidium bromide stained loading control, where you can see the bands corresponding to rRNA present in the input and in the fraction retained on the column, but not in the elution fraction. In the second panel, you can see U6 RNA. This is an RNA that is roughly 100 nucleotides long and is, is involved in splicing. It does not uh, associate with AGO and therefore it is not visible in the elution fraction, but only in the input and in the fraction retained on the column. The following panels now show, the, show you plots for small RNAs, namely microRNAs and tavi RNAs. These are transacting as iRNAs um, of Arabidopsis. And what you can see is that for all known small RNAs, you can reliably detect them in the elution fraction as well. Furthermore, the small RNAs are enriched by trapper isolation. For instance, for task three, you cannot even see a signal in the input fraction. However, um, in the elution, it becomes readily visible. Therefore, trapper isolation is highly suited for targeted small RNA analysis, and it can be used to assess small RNAs that require enrichment. So small RNAs whose levels are so low that they cannot be assessed on just uh, lysis. The trucker method can therefore be applied universally to all species that contain risk-mediated RNA high pathways. It is applicable across kingdoms, reliable isolation of known small RNAs was shown by northern blots. There is no a priori knowledge required to use trapper, and it is suitable for target small RNA analysis, but also for small RNA sequencing, which we will focus on in the next slide. This plot shows the length distribution and biotype assignment of mapped reads from a typical small RNA experiment done using a conventional small RNA-seq workflow. In this case, total RNA is extracted, for instance, with uh, trisole extraction and then subjected to small RNA library preps. Those are normally using total RNA as input, and the prep then inherently prevents large RNAs to be ligated and amplified efficiently, leading to libraries that contain small RNA inserts. However, there is no discrimination uh, possible between desired small RNAs and slightly larger degradation products. And most of the reads obtained by sequencing correspond to degradation products, in this case, degradation products of tRNAs that you can see here. Only a minor fraction of the desired RNA um, is retained in the sequencing results. So about 15 to 20 percent of sequencing reads correspond to siRNAs and microRNAs. Now, lengthy size selection procedures like gel extraction of the small RNA fractions after RNA extraction, which usually happens prior to the library prep, can reduce the amount of contaminating RNA species significantly. As a result, more sequencing space is available for the desired small RNA fraction. However, these methods are quite tedious and they increase the overall workflow time dramatically. In case of gel extraction, this is usually at least at hours, but most of these um, protocols contain an overnight elution step that easily increases your workflow time up to 16 hours even. Trapper, on the other hand, can also focus the reads on the desired microRNA and siRNA fraction, and it only takes 15 minutes. It is a simple 
15 minute step that is done prior to small to RNA extraction, which is anyway required for all these workflows. In addition, Tropper isolates functional small RNAs, whereas gel extraction not only takes much longer, but is purely based on size and cannot discriminate between functional and the non-functional small RNAs within this size range. Tropper isolation thus increases data quality by focusing the reads on functional small RNAs. This saves valuable sequencing space and you can multiplex between three to four times more libraries in a single run, obtaining the same number of reads as you would for a conventional small RNA sequencing workflow. Trapper is also faster, easier, and more reliable than conventional size selection methods, and adds the benefit of isolating functional small RNAs. Well, working with notoriously difficult degradation-prone samples is a large challenge, even for experienced researchers. RNA degradation during sample processing usually leads to a decrease in data quality. And the reason for this is that more degradation fragments are generated, and these end up as substrates in your small RNA library cuts. The result is an increase of undesired reads in the sequencing experiment. RNA degradation during sample preparation was mimicked here by incubating murin liver lysis with RNAs during extraction. The extracted small RNA was then used in library preps and sequenced. And as can be seen from the length distribution and biotype plot, for the degraded sample, there is a large fraction of RNA, RNA degradation fragments, usually derived from tRNA that ends up in your sequencing data. When compared to the data obtained from libraries with high quality intact RNA, the fraction of reads that is mapped to small RNAs, to microRNAs in this case, is dramatically decreased between the two samples. Size selection by gel extraction also does not solve this problem reliably, as the size of the degradation products with 31 to 34 nucleotides is very close to the size that is actually desired. For Trapper, its underlying principle isolates functional risks. And as these risks are in a native state, the protein components, especially the ego part, protect the small RNAs from RNA degradation. Therefore, Trapper isolate, isolation generates nearly identical profiles for intact high-quality RNA and degraded RNA. Small RNA correlation analysis was performed between all conditions tested, and as you can see, the R-square values are shown between the panels. When cross-comparing extractions from pres preserving and degrading conditions, it is revealed that you have a high correlation for small RNA read counts from trapper isolated RNA, whereas the correlation for intact versus degraded samples from conventional workflows is lower. So trapper small RNA isolation generates high quality small RNA preparations even from samples that are RNA degraded during the extraction procedure. Plasma-derived small RNAs are important biomarkers of, and of special interest for various biomedical applications. And with this, we come to another uh, of Tropper's uh, features. Because Tropper can actually increase the sensitivity of low abundant microRNAs, and plasma is known to have very low RNA content. However, it is still quite useful because it can be easily obtained repeatedly and it is minimally invasive. But even in addition to the low small RNA content, it poses further experimental challenges. Often the small RNAs are also degraded as there is pervasive degradation common when you work with blood samples. Further, slight alteration in sample processing and handling steps can influence the result and lead to inconsistencies. And also the lack of reproducibility and accuracy across sites 
is a well-known challenge for working with blood-borne small RNA biomarkers. Trapper can also solve these problems, as trapper purification can enrich small RNAs, as we've seen before, and also removes degradation products. So this plot shows you a typical picture, again, from a con conventional small RNA-seq experiment for small RNAs derived from neuron plasma. Also here, the majority of sequencing leads corresponds to RNA degradation products, again, tRNAs. The microRNA fraction only makes up 5 to 10 percent of all reads. Also in this setup, um, size selection via gel extraction cannot really efficiently be used to increase the fraction of microRNA reads. And the reason is that it is highly associated or is associated with high losses um, during the procedure. And therefore, when starting with minimal amounts of small RNA, you usually do not use an a method that reduces your yield even more. Trapper, however, is suitable for isolation of small RNAs from plasma samples. So also from this difficult sample type, small RNAs can be efficiently enriched and the contaminating undesired degradation products can be removed. From the blot on the right, you can see that the microRNA fraction is highly enriched. So trapper small RNA isolation enriches small RNA even from minute amounts. And, and for plasma samples, you can increase the number of usable reads by at least one order of magnitude. The last showcase I would like to present to you today is research that was done on Drosophila. Drosophila is a model organism that is used to study the silencing of transposable elements in the germline by pi RNAs and PV proteins. And transposon silencing in the germline is a prerequisite for fertility and reproduction of these animals and is therefore of high interest in the research community. The presence of the 30 nucleotide long 2FR RNA complicates the study of Drosophila small RNAs immensely as it is close in size to the undesired uh, the undesired RNA is close in size to the desired SI RNA and pi RNA class, which ranges from 23 to 29 nucleotides. And even from using custom RNA depletion that Josh has mentioned in the beginning, a significant amount um, of RNA reads still remain. So here you can see the 2S RNA after custom ribodepletion using a specific probe directed against 2S. Oxidation can actually be used in addition to ribodepletion to further deplete ribosomal RNA, ribosomal RNA fragments. Oxidation, however, also eliminates microRNAs, as you can see here, since they lack a 2O methyl modification. MicroRNAs, however, are uh, of special interest also for researchers studying pi RNAs, as these normally serve as a means to normalize the pi RNAs in between samples and allow you to um, compare different sample sets in different, con different conditions. So it is usually very desirable to maintain the microRNA composition of the sample. Trapper isolation is also useful for directly assessing ultrasophila small RNAs. As you can see, it effectively removes all undesired RNAs, including the 2S RNA, while maintaining the full profile of microRNAs. And as it only takes an hour for RNA isolation and 15 minutes for trapper, it saves researchers days of work and improves their data quality. So Trapper allows for the simultaneous analysis of pi RNAs and, my, and micro RNAs with, without wasting any reads on undesired RNAs. 
With this, I would like to conclude and hope that I could convince you that Trucker can really become the gold standard for small RNA studies. Trucker is the solution to many changes that are challenges that are routinely faced by researchers. Trucker is universally applicable, it is, set, it is specific, it is robust, easy and affordable, it is fast and sensitive. And with this, I would like to hand back to Josh, who will focus on the benefits of functional small RNA extraction even more. Okay, thank you, Yvonne. Uh, it's now my pleasure to present how you may expect to benefit from utilizing Trapper in your lab and in your research. So just kind of to, to sum up everything we've talked about so far, Trapper allows you to isolate only physiologically relevant small RNAs from risk complexes, focusing your reads on what matters, using only one workflow for all tissues, biofluids, eukaryotic species of interest, while skipping tedious and time-consuming methods like gel extraction, for ribosomal RNA depletion and allowing you to perform an entire RNA extraction, small RNA isolation, and small RNA library prep, the whole workflow in only one day. All of that in one day. So first, um, let's look again at the, the Trapper advantages versus the other current methods. Uh, speed. It is functionally as fast as your common RNA extraction kits. Uh, again, that one day workflow to get through your whole extraction and your library prep. Ease, even really in inexperienced users can do this. It is robust against RNA degradation during the process. It is universal for all eukaryotic species. It's specific for only functional small RNAs and it's sensitive. As Yvonne had shown, small RNAs uh, are collected and concentrated even from material with very low small RNA content, and low abundance small RNA studies are also performed with fewer reads. So I really want this time element to be visual for everybody. Uh, we discussed how tedious some of these methods are. As you can see, the reported methods for co-amino precipitation uh, take almost 10 hours. And in many labs, this is going to equate to easily uh, two days worth of work before you're heading into your library prep. Uh, gel extraction and ribosomal RNA depletion are even worse. They're more tedious, uh, where you, you may not be moving on to your library prep uh, or other downstream analysis until the third or maybe the fourth day. These can take two to three days to, to run. Uh, so before you're performing your library prep. Uh, as you can see, total time 16 hours and about 20 hours respectively. Um, small RNA extraction uh, can possibly be faster, mainly because uh, all of these methods include small RNA extraction. And so you're adding that to Trapper, but we're only adding 15 minutes onto a small RNA extraction with this Trapper column. And that's why we say it's functionally uh, the same thing. And again, you'll be able to move to the next step in the process, library prep, by during the same day. I also wanted to provide a visual for your cost savings and your efficiency as well. Uh, as this graph depicts, Trapper produces large savings in the small RNA NGS workflow. Trapper leads to not only a more robust, specific, and sensitive results in the output, but also 60% reduced sequencing costs or around a 300% increase in the samples, which can be run uh, for the same sequencing cost or in one sequencing run. Uh, so you'll see this, this depiction represents uh, an example of detection for low abundant small RNAs. So your required read depth would be about 10 million effective reads. Uh, with Trapper, you can use about 10 million reads directly to get those effective reads. And conventional RNA extraction followed by sequencing, 
you'll need about 25 million reads to gain your 10 million reads of functional small RNAs. And so a pooling on, say, a NextSeq with, uh, with, with single read 75, about 400 million reads, you can pull about 40 samples after extraction with Trapper. You're going to be able to pull about 16 samples after extraction with a standard small RNA isolation kit. And so you can see the end result is paying about $190 per sample versus about $120 per sample, and then having less noise with Trapper uh, bioinformatically in the end. So just, just to wrap up the features and benefits one more time, uh, and this, of course, this presentation will be available online. Uh, with Trapper small RNA analysis, it can be performed by anyone in any lab using even difficult input material, resulting in high quality small RNA for efficient RNA sequencing. And so finally, how to order this product. Uh, as you can see, we've got uh, an 8 prep and a 24 prep kit currently available for Trapper. Uh, prices here are listed in US dollars, so I know we do have some people uh, potentially watching internationally. Just contact Lexigen for your pricing. Uh, I also want to note we do have bundle kits of Trapper plus Lexigen's small RNA isolation kit. And so we have those in 8 and 24 preps as well. Catalog numbers included here on the page. And of course, you can find them on the website, contact your local rep, et cetera. We do have a 96 prep version of this planned for the future. We ship at room temperature, storage at four degrees Celsius. Uh, we usually in the US ship all of our products overnight, Monday through Thursday, so you can receive them uh, usually Tuesday uh, through Friday. And now uh, I'd like to welcome Yvonne back, and I'd also like to welcome Alex Moiker, the field application scientist from Lexigen, as panelists for our question and answer session. So it looks like we have had some questions pre-submitted, uh, and some questions have come in via uh, the question uh, app during the presentation. So we'll we'll do our best to get to everyone's questions. If any questions remain unanswered at the end of this presentation, uh, we will follow up with you individually as well. And so it looks like the first question is, how do you recommend optimizing this for different types of tissue within an organism? Hi, this is Alex Moyer here. Um, so for different tissue types, you will want to simply follow um, the recommended inputs that we propose for the various um, tissue type, whether it be tissue cells. Um, and if you want to optimize it within that range, uh, we would suggest doing an input series across a few concentrations within the recommended range to see what um, works best for your specific sample type. Awesome. Thank you, Alex. Um, another question. Uh, do you have a specific data analysis pipeline for Trapper? So in short, no, there is not a specific pipeline developed for Trapper. We recommend that customers use the data analysis application that they currently use for their small RNA experiments. Um, that being said, we are working on a dedicated pipeline, so there is something in development that will come out at some point. Very good. Thanks, Alex. Um, another question that has come in, how much free RNA DNA saturates one column? It would be useful to estimate starting material besides cell number and tissue weight.
Yvonne, is that something that you'd like to take? Uh, sure, I can take the question. So um, we usually recommend um, this, the input based on tissue amounts. And the reason for that is that um, the binding capacity of, um, let's say, free RNA and, and DNA is much higher than the binding capacity of RNA and DNA inside a lysid. So for um, the capacity, it would be around uh, 100 to 200 micrograms for one column. However, the environment of a lysid with proteins present and viscosity changes this quite dramatically. So if you have a very viscous um, lysid, a very viscous solution, you might not be able to bind as much RNA and DNA to a tropical column. So therefore, um, it would be good to start with um, like five to 10 milligrams of tissue if it's possible. Awesome, thank you, Yvonne. Uh, another question that's coming, is Trapper combat compatible with small RNA-seq kits from other vendors and with homebrew methods? I can take this one. Uh, so the answer to that is yes. Uh, Trapper is definitely compatible with uh, third party or other vendor uh, small RNA-seq library prep kits um, using adapter ligation. Uh, so yes, that is that is possible. Very good. Okay, we've got a few more questions in here yet. Um, can Trapper be utilized for bacterial samples? So, uh, unfortunately, Trapper cannot. Uh, Trapper works only for eukaryotes. Um, no bacteria, viral, or mycoplasma samples um, will work with Trapper. Okay. And, and basically, uh, Alex, this has to do with the risk complexes, correct? That uh, this works with the risks and the argonaut proteins and, and the samples you mentioned don't contain uh, those, correct? Correct. Okay. So along with that, another question, which sample types can be input for Trapper? Um, well, so the Trapper method is, is essentially a universal method. So the broad answer is that any RNA I competent organism will work, uh, whether that's um, you know, tissue, biomaterial, or fluid. Uh, Yvonne uh, had listed the sample types that have been tested, uh, which include mouse, human, Drosophila, C. elegans, um, Arabidopsis, uh, and paramecium. So there are, you know, a number of uh, types that have been tested, although the possibilities are, of course, much broader than that. Very good. Thanks, Alex. Um, what's the lowest inputs for Trapper in order to get enough small RNA uh, for library prep? It's, let's see. Does it work for low input materials such as OO sites and embryos? Yvonne, maybe you want to uh, take this one. Sure, Josh. Um, well, it has been tested with as much as two uh, ovary pairs from Drosophila. So it always depends on how much sRNA is contained in the tissue. Um, it will not work when the input amount is too low. And this is not because uh, the trapper method will not work, but um, the way how it is done is that you end up with um, 75 microliters of risk elution fraction, which you can then extract all of it, but you might still end up with um, an RNA concentration in the sample that is then too low to be picked up by the small library prep. So this is the biggest issue here is that the RNA um, content that you end up with after extraction can just not be a small RNA library prep. Awesome. 
awesome. Thank you, Yvonne. Along the same kind of line of questioning, we have one that says, have you tested trapper and filamentous fungi that have several argonaut proteins? I can take this one and Yvonne, if you want to add anything when I'm done, feel free. But um, so fungi has not been tested, but uh, again, kind of touching on my my answer earlier as as a method that is focused on um, you know resulting in uh, an eluate that is agroprotein rich. Uh, this this certainly should work, um, and uh, it's just a matter of um, running an input series to determine the optimal input concentration. Exactly. So my addition would just simply be that it has been successfully used in Drosophila and Drosophila contains 27 agroproteins. So it is quite possible to do trapper with um, samples that are rich in agos. Very good. Thank you both for that answer. Um, here's a question that I find very interesting myself. Can the nucleic acid retained on the trapper column be recovered for regular mRNA sequencing or for a, say a three prime uh, RNA sequencing? Um, yes, technically it can. So you can always elude um, with high salt um, buffers from these kind of columns. The problematic point is to get rid of the salt. So you would need to do a couple rounds of um, RNA precipitation and washing in ethanol to get the salt out afterwards and then it can should be uh, perfectly suitable to be used uh, in RNA. -seq. I would recommend removing the DNA maybe before since it also contains DNA. So a couple of rounds of um, ethanol purification and DNA's treatment, and this should be fine to go. Awesome, very interesting. Um, okay, the next question in the list is, can you single out the argonaut proteins from all other proteins in the lysates at some point in this method? Alex, you wanna do this one? Uh, this one I'm not sure about. I'd like to see if Yvonne can help out on this one. Um, okay, Yvonne? Yes, I'm here. Um, what can be done or what was done by the researchers that developed the protocol is that they used um, ego antibodies on the trapper elution fraction later on and did a uh, co-immunoprecipitation basically on the egos and fished out the egos separately as well. So this can be done, but it still requires, so it's more like a... Um, separation after the trapper procedure and it still requires the antibodies. You can be done if possible. Within the trapper method there's no step that selectively uh, removes the ego proteins. Very good. Thanks again Yvonne. Uh, Looks like we're running down the question list pretty quick. Um, this may be the last one. Uh, how does Trapper rescue the snow RNAs if these do not interact with Argonaut? Uh, I can take this one. So <clears throat> Trapper uh, is you know, specifically intended using uh, the Argonaut protein complex as the um, goal result of the eluid. So in this case, um, you would not isolate non-argonaut bound um, RNA fractions. Okay, thank you, Alex. And, and that is, yeah, that is definitely correct. This method is going to isolate everything that interacts directly with the, the minimally conserved risk complexes in uh, the argonaut proteins. And so anything that doesn't interact directly um, may not uh, come through in the eluvid. Okay, let's see if any other questions have come in in answering these. 
Uh, here's, here's another one. Are there any other kinds of RNA binding proteins in the risk uh, that can be purified by Trapper? Yeah, well, the risks contain also other um, accessory proteins, for instance, for silencing um, or interaction factors, uh, especially in case of the PV proteins, there's a, um, a larger machinery that it also transiently interacts with the risk. It will all be in the lysid as well, but since those are usually transient interactions, it will not be a stable complex that you can then isolate. So when using agrocommunic precipitation, basically on the trucker lysid, you can also fish out some uh, protein interaction partners with that if the interaction is strong enough. Interesting. Thank you again, Yvonne. Okay, it looks like we have had a few more continue to come in and we've got a little bit more time, so I'll continue asking. Um, what are the spike-in standards recommended to use for RNA and protein and how much moles of spike-ins to use for sample yield for each column? This is a very in-depth question. Uh, Yvonne, you wanna take a shot at that one? I can try, but so far, well, you know, we have um, surf RNAs, so spike in RNA variants. However, these are not really suitable for microRNA research yet. So we do not have a microRNA module. So for this case, um, yeah, it would not actually, I don't, think there is a spike in that can be used for trapper, as trapper also only isolates small RNAs that are bound to agoproteins. These controls or the spike ins would also need to be bound to end up in the, in the, in the trapper elution and in the end in the RNA extraction. So in this case, one would have to use spike ins for the small RNA library prep maybe later those are artificial those should be artificial microRNA spikes okay thank you Yvonne Alex I'm going to shoot this next one back over to you um, just a, a, a clarifying question uh, the kit can be used to process serum and plasma samples correct uh, that's correct. Uh, Trapper has been tested with um, 150 microliters input of plasma. So that will work. Okay, very good. Um, and then this looks like, again, we're getting to the final question, I believe, in the list. Uh, how do you know if the small RNAs are loaded in an argonaut or not? Can the Aluit be used for protein analysis? I think we've already kind of addressed this, but uh, since it asks a little bit different question as well, um, Yvonne, I'm gonna shoot this one back over to you. Sure. Um, so the method basically removes also any small RNAs that are not loaded into Ego. So only Ego loaded protein uh, ego loaded small RNAs will end up in the trapper elution fraction. And because of this, um, yeah, you basically know that the small RNA was in an ego. Of course, the researchers that developed this have done uh, quite a lot of um, uh, experiments to actually validate this point. So, what was done also there is that um, the ego proteins was, were again fished out with um, antibodies by co-immunoprecipitation from the trapper alloid, and then um, identified by Western blot, the RNA was extracted from the immunoprecipitate so that you exactly know which argo protein would bind to which small RNA. So now, in this case, this was done with Arabidopsis. So Arabidopsis is a very well-studied organism and it used, was used here as a model organism. 
because it's so well known, you know exactly which ego binds which um, microRNA, it was a perfect showcase. So for these kind of um, analysis and experiments, I would like to redirect you to the publication. Again, this is uh, Grenzinger et al. and was published in June in Nucleic Acids Research. Awesome. Thank you, Yvonne. Killed it. Um, it's now 1.55 p.m. and I believe we have come to the end of the questions that uh, have been asked. If I happen to have missed a question, uh, please forgive me and we will follow up with you uh, with an email afterwards if we identify any questions that I've missed. Um, also, uh, your sales rep should be forwarding you the link to the recorded webinar as well after the presentation. And if you have any more questions, you can also ask then. Um, please remember to stick around and answer our exit quiz for your chance to win your $5 Starbucks gift card. Uh, and thanks again to all of you. And thank you again to Alex and Yvonne for your help as well. Goodbye, everyone, and have a great day.